Hello, movie lovers, and welcome to episode 28, our final episode of our Christmas Carol reviews. If you have not been watching, you really need to start from the beginning and watch all of these. They're not very long, five, ten minutes each. Um, you can catch them all. They don't have to be watching, or you can just find out the ones that you want. But click the link in the description to get to the playlist and watch the introduction. But today, I'm not doing a review. We've already done our awards, picked our favorites, or picked the best. Now, I'm going to just give you a couple final thoughts before we part on this Christmas Eve. So, first off, my overall thoughts. There are many interpretations, many different ways you could have taken this beloved story of everybody, and I think all of them had at least something that could have done, that they did well. There were a couple things here and there. Obviously, there were a lot that I pointed out on these different ones that did not work and probably took away from the story or were not exactly the best, but... I think everything you can find something good, and of course the story itself. I mean, it's just brilliant. You start with this old man. He's mean. He's mean. And then through sight and vision of how he came from one, he sees what he could be now, and then what happens if he doesn't change, and then all of a sudden overnight, boom, he's good, and he finds the true meaning of Christmas. It is the epitome of Christmas stories and just fantastic and like I said after watching it so many times I still enjoy the story I will go back and watch many of these again but every single interpretation has something good now obviously along the way we had a few disappointments okay uh, one of them that I was actually looking forward to I don't think I did a very good job in my review of telling you how much I was looking forward to this was the Vincent Fagan the 2012 um, interpretation of it where it was supposed to be darker um, I, I was really looking forward to it being you know uh, to show the fear in everybody's eyes, the ghost, and how bleak Scrooge's life was. And then what, what really lost it for him, besides just the cinematography, if you go back and watch that review, you can check that out. But um, the, besides that, what really got me was when he turned good, there was no change. I mean, he was still just that bad. And if they had that dynamic change, I think he really could have gotten it, because this is a ghost story. I mean, the title that was on the original book says it was a ghost story. So it is a very, very horror-based movie that I think lost a lot in some of these because they didn't actually play to that ghost side of it and go to Scrooge's fear. Um, but, you know, that that was one that tried and didn't quite do it. Another one that was kind of a disappointment was The Stingiest Man in Town. First off, I love Walter Matthau. Um, I've always enjoyed him and his acting in uh, Grumpy Old Men. Um, I actually enjoyed him in Hello, Dolly. Uh, if you've seen uh, the Dennis the Menace movies, I thought he was fantastic in those. I've always really enjoyed him as an actor. But in this role, I, I feel like some of the screenwriting and some of the choices that were there were too too away from the story. And I think that the fact we had the whole Santa thing what was an issue. Um, but if you watch my review, you'll know I, do, I did enjoy the inclusion of Birthday for a King, that song. But I think just that and then concentrating on B.A.H. Humbug was really kind of a, a downer. On that part, I was really looking forward to it. I've always enjoyed the Rankin and Bass as well. So when I saw Rankin and Bass was doing a Christmas car, I'm like, oh, they're like the, the they're like the best at Christmas specials, so this one's gonna be good. And it was really just it was a letdown. Okay. Tim Curry. I love Tim Curry as an actor. Okay, another one that I was really looking forward to. And I really think, as I said in my review, that Tim Curry did a great job, but I thought a lot of the choices like the addition of Debit and then um, the, the the screenplay writings, that really just took it down and nothing that Curry could have done could have probably saved that one from the writing that it had. So that was also downplayed. But obviously, we all remember what probably the biggest disappointment was and that was the Christmas special in which Vincent Price played the narrator. I was so looking forward to that. I absolutely love Vincent Price. Like I said, I have actually a plan to do a series based around Vincent Price's movies and something else um, with that. You know, we'll get onto that later. But still, I, when I saw this, it's like, oh, Vincent Price, he's going to be able to um, narrate these this ghost story, much like the Vincent Fagan thing. I was like, oh, they're going to show the dark side. And all of a sudden, we're going to go to, I don't sound like Star Wars on the dark side, but and we're going to show the darker side of the story. And then we're going to move on to something that's really good because Vincent Price, I know, can do both. And then it just wasn't there. It wasn't very good. So those four, I think, were the pro probably the biggest disappointments that I had throughout this entire process. But, you know, I mean, there were a, a few other places here or there that really weren't but I had such high expectations for a lot of those and they just didn't live up then a couple surprises some ones that I thought oh this is just it's, it's gonna be okay and then I was totally blown away the probably the biggest surprise that I had there was Rich Little okay I've watched some of Rich Little stuff I knew what he was I knew he was good at what he does but the way that he worked the story with those characters I was just like holy cow I was rolling I was just laughing so hard while watching that it was so great it is so finally done by such a talented man and I, I should have given him more credit and I didn't but that was a huge surprise Mr. Magoo 
I've never been a fan of Mr. Agu per se, uh, mostly because my introduction to Mr. Agu was the Leslie Nielsen movie, which <laughs> you, you get it anyway. But when I saw this one, I was like, okay, yeah, I could I could deal with this. And then you know, like I said, the disappointment was there might, wasn't enough of the shtick, but it was still very well done. I was very blown away for it being the first one. And then another big surprise was the Albert Finney version. I've heard people that have somewhat not liked it um, because it had some longer dance sequences that didn't feel right or they really just enjoyed the musical these days and that one just kind of felt out of place but I really enjoyed it. I've also heard a lot of people complain about Albert Finney himself and some acting choices. I mean the, the way he was sent, it, he followed the story, he actually did a good job. I enjoyed it. Was it the best adaptation? No. No, it, it wasn't. It was up there. I, I highly enjoyed it individually but I, I mean I, I thought that it should have received more credit than it did. Um, but some people apparently don't like it. And everybody's to tell their opinion. I'm not going to judge anybody's opinion. But for my personal sake, I actually did enjoy that movie quite a bit. Um, I still have that Thank You Very Much song stuck in my head. And I watched it, I don't know, like two, three weeks ago um, before doing that review. So, I mean, if, if something is stuck in your head like that, it can't be all bad. It can't. So the one thing I wanted to do before ending the series was basically answer a question that I have been asking myself. If, if I was to make a Christmas Carol collection, uh, what would I include in that collection? And for me, I have um, nine movies that I would say are essential. Some of these not so much, but are essential when collecting these Christmas Carols, okay? And the first one, you gotta have 1935 starring Sir Seymour Hicks. Now this was named Scrooge, if you remember, okay, but 1935 starring Sir Seymour Hicks because it was the first one with sound. Now, the silent ones, you can take them or leave them. You can find them on YouTube uh, for free if you want, but you can take them or leave them on that point. Um, but you have this first one with sound, and Sir Seymour Hicks has such a history with the part. And what he's done to create such a great story in that way, I, I think you need to have that a part, of, a part of your collection. Obviously, the next one you have to have is Alistair Sims, 1951. Okay, you have to have that one. It is arguably one of the better, it's arguably one of the best ones. Um, some people think it is the best one. It's by far a Christmas classic. You just have to have it. Albert Finney Scrooge, it's a different telling of the story. You have those songs and everything. So if you want to have a full, complete Christmas Carol, you have to have that one. Um, then you have to have the Alistair Sims uh, animated one. I mean, some people will say they want the NBC animated special because of nostalgic reasons. But for me, this one is probably the best animated one that we have. Um, this was the best one on there that I enjoyed watching everything. And you really, I think, need to have that one in your collection. And then the, the one that's really just adorable, you have to have, especially if you're a fan of this genre, is Mickey's Christmas Carol. If you enjoy Disney, you have to have that one. And personally, I think that's actually a really good adaptation, especially for children. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, and then you have to have what is by far my favorite, the one that I absolutely loved, was 1984's George C. Scott's version of A Christmas Carol. That one has to be there. It is everybody's top five list if not their best one so that one needs to be there and then because I'm just me and I, I do love this one I would not have a Christmas Carol collection without a Muppet Christmas Carol I still absolutely love that one it's probably my personal favorite if I was gonna just pull one out that I want to be entertained and laugh along you know that would be the one I choose um, then you have to have in my opinion Christmas Carol the, mu the musical while it wasn't the best adaptation and probably could have had a lot more and left a lot to be desired you have to have that one because that is the version that is going around these days that is the one that is um, touring has a bunch of different people playing it it's traveling to all different cities um, it's here in Kansas City I, I think uh, this week and next week. So, I mean, all of that, you have to have that one there just to get the music, just to learn the music, understand the words, everything. And then the last one I think you really need, um, if you're going to have a full uh, Christmas Carol collection, is the 2009 version with Jim Carrey. While a lot of people found it contradictory, it is still the closest to the book that I have watched on this one. Um, so if you're going to have one that you want to be close to the book and show um, either kids or friends or family one that really covers the book, you have to have that one. It's really, really necessary. So those nine are the ones that I think you really need to have if you want a complete Christmas Carol collection. Obviously, you can get all of them. Um, you don't have to get any of them. It's, it's up to you. And you may disagree with me. That's fine. Everybody's entitled to their opinion. But for me, that's what it is. Now, the other one that I actually have been asked um, by some of my co-workers is what version would you show first? Okay, especially when they watched my um, The Man Who Invented Christmas, they said, don't have that be the first version that the kids see. For me, 
my first version that I would show kids, especially since um, of the people I know and everything, I would show them Mickey's Christmas Carol. Okay, and there's two reasons for this. First off, most of them will have beloved characters in the Disney characters and everything. Um, so obviously they know that they have sort of a connection to start with all right there. But the main thing that it is, is besides being entertaining, is it's relatively short. It's 25 minutes. Okay, at 24, 26, somewhere around that, but 25 basic, basically. It's so it's short enough that it can keep their attention span. They get the story. It really didn't take anything away. And like I said, it had those beloved characters. Um, so you can go from there. And then if they enjoy that one and they're starting to get a little bit older and can sit for a little bit longer, I'd move them on to a Muppet Christmas Carol. Um, just because once again it's entertaining. Um, there's jokes that uh, not they might not get, but you'll get, but they'll get eventually. I mean, it's it's perfect. It's brilliantly done there, and I, I think that would be the second one before moving them on to the more dramatic ones. Um, if you're trying to find a first dramatic one, I think a transition with the Jim Carrey version from 2009 would be good. But then possibly going to Alistair Sims. Um, because George C. Scott's version tends to get a little dark, and depending on what age your child is, you might not want that um, immediately. So. Anyway, guys, before I sign off for the last time here on my Christmas Carol videos, I have to say I have really enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed these as well. Um, I know I didn't hit every Christmas Carol adaptation. Once again, there were 213 of them. I couldn't hit all of them. But if there's one that you really, really wanted me to hit and I didn't, please leave a comment down uh, below, and I'll make sure to take a look at it. Maybe you'll get a special video dedicated to you. So, But anyway, if you like what you've been seeing, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. These videos are going to be up forever, so you can still continue to share them. God bless all of you. In fact, God bless us, everyone. And that's a wrap. God bless you.